question. Hi, everyone. This is Michelle Grimolia, the president and CEO here at Woodland Pond. And this is my weekly address for a Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. And we are going to mix this up a little bit today. We are going to start with reading some of the rumors that came out of ye old rumor mill. And I think we'll put the rumor bill back into the mailroom a little bit later this week. But why don't we kick this off with some of the great rumors that are circulating around the community. First, Ruth, our hostess with the mostess, is really a fashion model. Next, I heard we will be able to skinny dip in the pool after 10 p.m. every night. This was a question. Is it okay to pick the cannabis plants that are planted around in the beds now, or do I have to wait until after they flower? Oh, another question. Will the folks without computers and email be charged an extra monthly fee? I don't know. I guess you'll have to answer one of the surveys to find out. Oh. Jason will be the personal measurement for the cottages on Danskin Way. Not really sure exactly what that means, but we'll have to look into that. Oh, attention management. Please let us know if it is true that there is roadkill in the Impossible Burger. Thank you. Keep these rumors coming, please. I really like them. All right, now into some real important weekly stuff. Today, you're noticing a crane. Um, we are beginning the delivery of the roofing materials on the health center flat roof replacement. I know it's loud. Uh, we did send out an alert to the assisted living residents on the alert message system and the staff. If you did not receive that alert, it would have come either to your landline phone, to your cell phone, um, either on, it, it either called your phone or you got a text or it went to your email or any combination of those things. If you reside in assisted living and you did not receive that alert sometime this morning, please make sure to contact concierge and we will add you to that alert system. Um, so again, yes, that was probably loud this morning. Nothing to be worried about. That was just the delivery of those roofing materials. We do expect to begin that roofing replacement work sometime maybe later this week or uh, beginning next week. Obviously, it will be weather dependent, um, but we are going to be removing or the contractor will be removing any um, existing flat roofing material, uh, any compromised insulation. Uh, we have foam insulation underneath the flat roofing material. Any of that that's compromised will be removed, replaced, and then we'll be, we'll be replacing flat roof material. Um, this is uh, preventative maintenance. This is, you know, 15 years the community has been open and we're doing lots of maintenance projects this summer. Um, we do not want to defer maintenance on the campus and we have a capital, you know, project plan. Um, and this is just one of those projects. So here we go. Uh, tomorrow, the bistro will be closed, which is where we serve lunch, the seated lunch, because we do have a, a prospective marketing luncheon. Uh, these are a great success, great fun for our campus. I think we've got about 55 prospective residents coming tomorrow, and we can't wait to welcome them. Thank you in advance to all of the residents that will be participating in this panel luncheon, uh, and we look very much forward to that. But again, tomorrow for lunch, which is Wednesday, you will be able to eat lunch on campus if you are a resident, but it will be served at the pub. Uh, just a quick note, personnel change wise, uh, we did send out a notification yesterday. And just to reiterate this, we will be sending out revised organizational chart and um, a job posting. Um, but we have made a decision that for due to um, some of the changes that we're seeing um, within the industry, uh, regulation changes and some of the changing needs of our residents that we will be recruiting for a new unit manager for our assisted living and memory care unit. Um, we want to thank Marion Malqui very much for all of the hard work that you've given us. Uh, we will re be replacing that position with a registered nurse. 
Um, so it will more closely mirror our uh, unit nurse, uh, unit manager position for skilled nursing. Uh, this will allow for us to ensure that residents can be assessed by a nurse uh, that it is out of the scope of practice for an LPN. So we will be elevating that position to a registered nurse position. Um, so we'll be recruiting for that. Um, and so if anyone knows a registered nurse that might be in the market for a position, we will be posting that hopefully today. Um, and we will be sending out a modif um, an updated uh, organizational chart with you know who to contact in the interim time uh, for questions on the unit and so forth. Um, and uh, always looking to you know enhance and elevate you know the, the type of offering that we're, we're providing uh, but and having a registered nurse in that position I think is something that will benefit you know everybody in the long run. Um, this Thursday we had scheduled or planned to have our kickoff to summer uh, barbecue in the courtyard for all residents and staff. It is supposed to rain though, and uh, we have decided to postpone that. So again, we are going to be postponing the lunchtime barbecue that we had scheduled, uh, and that will be happening on Friday instead. Very exciting. Um, I had a really nice chat this morning with Matt, our new fitness coordinator. Uh, we were talking about um, the strength and balance class that he added on uh, several days a week in the afternoon at one o'clock in the classroom. Um, and he was talking about how it's already sort of busting out of the seams and that on nice days, he's planning on doing it in the courtyard and some other really cool things that he's got on the calendar. Um, I would really encourage all residents to look at your fitness calendar, not just from independent living, but encourage residents and family members to look at, if you're not physically here on campus, if you're a loved one, look on our website and take a look at our fitness and activity calendars. But in particular, in this case, because we're talking about fitness, all of the things that we're currently offering, Matt has really taken what we're currently offering or what we were offering on the fitness side of things and already started to elevate it. But I really encouraged Matt to get feedback from the residents, from the loved ones, and get your ideas. Um, he's adding in cornhole several times a week uh, and ladder ball. We talked about the horseshoes and bocce and maybe adding badminton. He's going to look into getting a uh, modular or portable pickleball uh, court to see if that's an option, maybe taking over um, periodically parts of our parking lots to be able to do that. Uh, but we want your ideas and Matt is seems like he's up for anything. Let's get this campus really revved up and we have lots of room on the calendar. And I would encourage residents from all areas of campus to really be participating. Um, we've got more time where the uh, pool is gonna be uh, observed by either residents or by Matt. And I wanna once again reiterate, we do have the hydraulic lift for the pool. So regardless of what your mobility level is, we have the ability for you to get into the pool safely. So let's get people in the pool and swimming. This is a great option for people. I really want to encourage that. Um, the last thing that I wanna talk about, and I wanna spend a little bit of time on this. This is a little bit more of a sensitive matter, um, but I do think that it needs to be said uh, because I was contacted last week. I had I, I'd been off campus. Um, I was out of the office the afternoon that this that this occurred and a couple of staff members had contacted me, sort of taken aback, um, not exactly sure how to handle the situation. And I just want to address this as we go into what is going to be, you know, possibly a little bit of a divisive next six months, depending on how things kind of roll out um, with the, you know, the various, you know, sort of high level trials that are going on with Trump and with uh, Hunter Biden, and as the election is going to go on, there could potentially be some tempers that flare or some excitement that happens. Um, we have to really keep in mind that on this campus, there could be some really varied opinions on what the outcomes of all of these things are. Um, when the verdict came out on the uh, charges against Trump last week, there were a number of residents that were very excited about this. And I 
I was not here, but I guess we're very vocal about that. And that is obviously free freedom of speech. A couple of staff members contacted me, very upset about this, um, sort of, you know, questioning, is this allowed? These are some of the younger staff members. Is this allowed? I thought we couldn't talk about, you know, these kinds of things, politics, et cetera. You know, I did explain that's not quite politics. Um, you know, the lines can get a little bit gray. Uh, I think that I just want everyone to sort of keep in mind that regardless of what our opinions are on one thing or another, there are certain things that can be considered sensitive. Um, and whether it's the verdict in that case or something may happen, you may be following this Karen Reed trial very closely out of Boston and you may have strong feelings about that. Um, I think it's just really important for us to know our audience. And, you know, while a lot of our residents here are certainly more left-leaning, and that may be something that is very um, favorable to a lot of our residents, we may have, you know, in four years, maybe that swings the other way, or we may have a lot of staff members, for example, that lean very conservatively. So, it really just is important for us to know our audience or to be mindful of the fact that while you may be excited about something like that, it may be taken really in an opposite way. And we are kind of in a time right now that people are might be a little bit more prone to be reactive to things than we may have been accustomed to even five years ago. Um, I think there's no question that people are dealing with tension and anxiety um, in a way that had, is a little bit unprecedented. Um, that is something that we talk about regularly at the Mental Health and Wellness Committee. Um, in some ways, again, the pandemic and economic stressors, uh, family things, illness, addiction, things have changed a little bit. Tensions are higher than they used to be. And you don't ever know what's going to set someone off. Um, so we intentionally actually changed some of the language in our handbook this time around to really ask people, and we have the similar language in our employee handbook, to really not ever try to limit freedom of speech or freedom of expression, but really just to have people try to be mindful of your audience and just maybe think twice before saying something like, is it going to be valuable for me to bring this up right now? Do I 100% know how the person I'm about to say this to, is it going to be a welcome conversation? Do I really need to bring it up right now? Um, I, you know, just really trying to be thoughtful about that. Uh, you know, I just really want everyone to be thinking this is a community. Um, we want everyone to feel like it's a safe space to the extent that we can to try to control our ourselves um, and not put someone else in an uncomfortable situation. Um, just to be mindful of that because we do care for one another. And one of the things that makes Woodland Pond unique and very special is the way that we have somehow in just a very organic manner been able to create a sense of belongingness and I want to see that continue. And the way that we do that is to be mindful of one another. And I appreciate everyone here being able to do that so carefully and empathetically. And I appreciate you all for helping me in this, um, in this effort. So um, I hope you all enjoy the day. It's beautiful out and I hope that you take care. Thanks so much.